turn to Council Member Diana Reyna, uh, who represents the northern part of Brooklyn and is a member of the New York City Council, clearly, and as such serves as the chair of the City Council's Rules Committee. And I particularly want to thank uh, the Council Member for joining us uh, today, since she was only asked to do so this morning. <laughs> it's no surprise. Um, I guess it's consistent with how we're being um, with how we're driving this whole issue on term limits. Everything is last minute. And I can only give you my perspective from what I've had to live through. Um, in 2001, I had the privilege of being able to run, yes, because of term limits, as a 26-year-old against three men. I actually won. I was the underdog. Never thought it could happen. Um, not that I didn't believe in myself, but I had many that didn't. In 2003, I have to run all over again because there's redistricting. Now I have to represent not only the district I had to fight long and hard for, but now I have to go back to the drawing board and represent a bi-borough district because my lines were shifted into Queens. So I picked up a whole new population. In 2005, I have to defend now for the first time for a four-year term, uninterrupted, a district. And now I have the opportunity to say whether or not it is in the best interest of the people I represent to serve them if they choose to vote for me four more years uninterrupted. Because I highlight the uninterrupted part only to express to you how frustrating it is to have to deal with the first two what would be considered terms in two year formations each with two different districts to then finally serve the people of New York to then finally say that I am going to be serving the 34th district. Aside from that particular point, I wanted to just address certain figures that get lost in the translation of the argument of term limits. You know, I can't relate to the 1993 term limits discussion and campaign but I can relate to the 1996. In 1993, I was in college, 19 years old. Don't know, was disconnected from politics. As perhaps many college uh, students are. But I came back to my neighborhood and I had the privilege of serving for a, an assemblyman, Assemblyman Vito Lopez. And in 1996, one of the things I had to join the cause for was whether or not to support term limits. One of the biggest frustration was trying to explain what term limits was all about and trying to get people to come out and vote. And more frustrating than that is the apathy in the city of New York than trying to convince people come and vote for or against a law that prohibits or determines how many years you can serve as a public official. The 1993, out of 1.9 million voters that came out to vote in a mayoral election, 610,000 voters voted for term limits. And 420,000 voted in opposition of. What's startling to me is that 860,000 decided not to vote. But we forget that. In 1996, 560,000 people voted for a two-term election and 650,000 voted no. But a startling 690,000 decided not to vote for it despite the fact that they came out to vote. So, Again, I ask, is it apathy? Mind you, 
1996, there were 13 million registered voters in Kings County alone. 13 million, and we're deciding who's going to be mayor of the city of New York because 1.9 million people come out to vote. 1.9 million. One, I have here. 1.3 million. I apologize, I apologize, you're right. Thank you, I apologize. 1.3 million people in the borough of Brooklyn. I apologize, I, I startled everyone. That, I was just checking to see if you were awake. Someday there will be 13 million people. Yeah, that's and right. And we look forward to it. On the road. <laughs> in 1993, there were 12 registered voters in the Kings County. So that I raised these, what, I, I did it again, I apologize. Let me just put this dot here. I was writing very quickly and trying to prepare for this because I didn't want you to be disenfranchised by the figures as well. Because that serves towards this discussion as to where do we really have a problem? You know, and, and I'm not here to save the world and certainly not to save the city council and certainly not to re-elect or not elect the next mayor of New York alone. But I can tell you that if I have the opportunity to serve the 34th district for four more years uninterrupted, I want to do so and have the privilege of giving my constituency the opportunity to vote in favor or in opposition of that. And right now, there was such a delay in trying to propose a referendum, whether that was on the part of the mayor, the speaker of the council, or the public, no one stood up in time for a referendum. So here we are. Now, the mayor superseded the public by conveniently proposing a charter commission, then conveniently decides to skip the deadline, September 4th, and now the punching bag for the city of New York is the city council. I cannot tell you how frustrating it is to have to deal with a charter that already gives more than 90% power to the mayor, where the legislative branch, and all due respect to Randy Master, who is a deputy mayor, um, who, I believe, you know, there's already an imbalance here. And to see that the mayor does have more power, and we've allowed him to have more power, and he has cornered the le legislative branch, which is supposed to balance out government in the municipality, is getting what he wants. The question continues to remain for me whether or not I will get the opportunity to serve the constituents of the 34th district with a four-year term uninterrupted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Randy Mastro, who is the former deputy mayor of the city of New York from 19... <clears throat> excuse me, 